absolute, its stealth unrivaled. It can take down prey three times its own weight. But tonight, that power means nothing. The hunter is starving, and its only option is a fortress of daggers. Claws that grip like steel hooks, jaws designed to crush vertebrae. Its spotted coat, the rosettes, are not for show. They are a cloak of invisibility, a tactical advantage. Tonight, that stealth has brought it face to face with an impossible choice. It is a living bastion. Weighing up to 60 pounds, it is the largest, most formidable rodent in Africa. It has evolved a single, devastatingly effective strategy. These are not simple spines. Each quill is a sophisticated weapon, hollow, light, and sharp as a needle. They are designed not just to pierce flesh, but to detach easily from the porcupine and remain lodged in the attacker. Every muscle twitch, every attempt to remove them, drives the barbs deeper. It does not need to see the leopard clearly. It does not need to be fast. It doesn't even need to fight back. When we look closer, we see the gaunt frame beneath that perfect coat. This predator is on the brink of starvation. Its usual prey has vanished. A failed hunt tonight isn't just a missed meal, it's a fatal miscalculation. It doesn't pounce. Not yet. This is the first warning. A sound that speaks of millennia of successful defense. But a feint. A quick bat with its paw. This is the test. It's trying to find the head. The leopard's paw, armed with lethal claws, connects. But it finds no soft flesh. It finds only a dense thicket of spines. lifts its paw, and when we look closer, we see the price of that first contact. The leopard has just learned its first lesson. To touch the fortress is to be wounded by it. The dance begins. This is a war of attrition, of strategy against biology. The leopard is a genius of spatial awareness. It doesn't need to be fast. It just needs to be smart. It keeps its rear pointed directly at the danger. Leopard's frustration grows. Starvation is a powerful, agonizing motive. It cannot give up. It tries a new tactic. Div Dash, attempting to startle the porcupine to make it run. We 
we must understand what the leopard is facing. These are not just spines. They are barbed missiles, and they are embedded in a layer of loose muscle. The slightest touch is all it takes for them to detach and begin their deadly work. It is now processing a terrible equation. Pain in its paw is radiating, a burning, throbbing distraction. The leopard's mouth, its most precise weapon, finds nothing. A new cluster of quills now decorates its muzzle, its cheek, its shoulder. It knows the kill shot is impossible. It knows the grappling claws are a liability. The gnawing hunger says attack. The searing pain says retreat. The quills already embedded are a death sentence in the making. The barbs will migrate, piercing vital organs, causing infection it cannot fight. When we analyze this encounter, we are not seeing a simple victory. It is a creature of pure defense. Its strategy is to make the predator defeat itself. It forced the leopard into a no-win scenario. Attack and be maimed, or retreat and starve. This is survival of the smartest. The porcupine expends minimal energy for a total tactical victory. The fortress of quills didn't just protect the porcupine, it taught the leopard a fatal lesson. It let the leopard's own hunger and aggression become its downfall. But is any defense truly perfect? The porcupine relies on its attacker, giving up on the hunt. It wins by making the cost of victory simply too high. The porcupine's quills are a brilliant defense against flesh. But next time, we explore what happens when a hunter meets a warrior 